We are here today to provide an accounting of the officer involved shooting that took place on November 19th. I want to start by reiterating my comments of condolences to the family of Kenneth Jones and all community members that may be affected by this event. Since a grand jury will be called in this case, the release of the video and other evidence will be made public after the grand jury. So the body camera footage will be released for sure, and I support its release. On Thursday, November 19th, 2020, at 7.25 p.m., Officer Marty Air, who was driving, and Officer Faulkner, the passenger officer, said they were traveling south on 27th Street by Stratford Square Apartments when they saw Dart's Charger southbound on 27th Street, stopped in the middle of the road. The officer said they watched as the vehicle would drive forward a couple feet and stop, and then drive forward again. Both officers thought the driver might be impaired. I do want to point out right now from the start, we have no evidence the driver was impaired. We don't think she was. Everybody else in that car, all the females in the car, innocent in this matter. The officers exited the vehicle and ordered everyone to show their hands. They could see there were four people in the vehicle and all but Jones complied. The officers could immediately see Jones reaching towards the floorboard. Officer Faulkner yelled to Officer Martier, he's reaching. The officers drew their duty guns as they approached the car and gave loud verbal commands for everyone to show their hands. All but Jones complied. Officer Martier said Jones' body movement was indicative of him having or possibly having a firearm. Martier tried to open Jones' door, which was locked. Jones' window was partially down, and Martier yelled multiple times for him to open the door. Jones did not comply. Martier holstered his handgun and used his flashlight to break Jones' window and open the door. Jones slid towards the passenger side of the vehicle as Martier reached inside. Martier was able to get a hold of Jones and pull him out. The officers yelled hands or some variation of show me your hands 14 times from the time they got out of their cruiser to the time they removed Jones from the car. Faulkner said he could see Jones start to put his hands in his pants and yell to Officer Martier, he's reaching. He was told to put his hands behind his back two times, received noncompliance. Officer Martier said he was trying to keep a hold of Jones' left arm. Officer Faulkner was on Jones's right side and traced his hand along Jones' right arm in an attempt to gain control of his hand, which was still in his waistband. Faulkner said once his hand met Jones's hand, Faulkner's hand was actually on the metal of a gun. And at one point, both he and Jones had their finger in the trigger guard of the gun inside of Jones's baggy pants. Faulkner said when he realized Jones had a gun in his hand, he let go of Jones and pushed him away from him and yelled, he's got a gun, he's got a gun, 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 as he drew his firearm on Jones. Faulkner said as Jones was going away from him towards the east sidewalk, he saw Jones raise his right elbow upward as he looked over his left shoulder and was turning his body towards Officer Marty Air. Officer Faulkner said he thought Jones was going to shoot Marty Air, who was standing directly to Jones's left. Officer Faulkner discharged his firearm four times. He radioed for dispatch and told them of the shots fired and requested a squad. After the shots were fired, both Faulkner and Marty yelled for Jones to show his hands. After a few moments of no response, Marty Air holstered his duty weapon and started to go towards Jones. Faulkner yelled at Marty Air, Rich, he's got a gun. Marty Air responded, I know, we gotta render aid. Martier rolled Jones onto his back. As Martier rolled Jones over, a gun fell from Jones's right hand. Faulkner again yelled, gun, gun, gun. The officers pulled Jones away from the gun and both Faulkner and Martier immediately began chest compressions on Jones until a squad arrived to transport Jones to the hospital. Mr. Jones was struck once in his lower back, once in his right shoulder blade, and once in his upper mid back. From the time of the traffic stop to the time of the shots were fired was one minute and seven seconds. A Springfield 45 caliber handgun was found. There was one round in the chamber and five rounds in the magazine. A vial of liquid was found in Jones's clothing. That vial tested positive for PCP. The 
toxicology report from the autopsy has not been received as of yet. That usually takes a couple weeks. The Omaha Police Department's use of force policy allows for the use of deadly force to protect yourself or another person from serious bodily injury or death. In this incident, the officers faced a very difficult situation with a person with a gun who would not comply with their commands. The officer used deadly force in accordance with our policy. Our internal affairs unit will analyze the entire incident for any potential secondary violations. We do this because it is our goal to minimize the number of officer-involved shootings that we have in our community. It is a large city and officers will enter people's lives in the worst possible moments. So there's bound to be some incidents that take place. It's unavoidable statistically. But as a certified department, we are always looking to learn from critical incidents to determine where we can avoid them in the future. If there are other witnesses to this incident, or if there are other videos out there, I'm asking that you get a hold of the Omaha Police Department. We will continue to take and receive any evidence on this matter. So as chief, I've watched a lot of videos over the years, and this was, this was one of the most non-compliant situations that I, that I have seen as chief. I can't control what um, some members of our community will, will, how they will perceive this. And I can't control, and I don't know if there's anything that I can say to change anybody's mind, nor am I attempting to. I'm just laying out the facts. And as chief, I've had a number of large, high-profile matters. And I, my decisions have fell all over the board because that is each set of circumstances, each incident has a different set of fact patterns. Nothing is ever the same. Every incident is different. And there have been occasions where I have fired officers. On this occasion, my command staff and I feel that this was in accordance with our deadly force policy.